Hi, everybody. So tonight, it looks like I'm going to finally get to shoot again after about three or four days of uh, wildfire smoke that has been obscuring the night skies and the days. Our, our uh, air quality index has been really high. It's been over 150. It's been advised to stay indoors. And uh, we did have uh, some thunderstorms roll through. I think that helped clean things up a little bit. Um, our air quality index dropped below 50 today, so it was like the best day in the last three. Um, and uh, I'm working on IC5070, the Pelican Nebula. And uh, what, four or five nights ago, I got maybe two and a half hours of data on it. And uh, so I'm hoping to, uh, to get another full night tonight and, uh, and then one more night in addition to that. Yeah, I'd like to come out with uh, uh, some you know, 11 or 12 hours of data if I can. I'm shooting in uh, uh, dual narrowband with an OSC camera. And um, I've been just really happy with the, uh, um, the, the data that I've, that I've seen right now uh, with, the, um, uh, with the two and a half hours that I've shot. So um, anyway, that's, it's really encouraging. And I feel really uh, good that we've got some decent weather. There's some thin cirrus clouds about, and uh, they're supposed to clear out. And then, uh, yeah, the forecast says it's going to be uh, uh, good conditions tonight. And so we'll see. So I'm Doug, and this is Astro AF, and I hope you'll stick around and check out the rest of the video. If you like it, please give a thumbs up and uh, share with your friends. Subscribe would be amazing. So thank you very much. So just doing a test here, connecting to my Astroberry server. And this is on my Raspberry Pi that's attached to the top of, the, uh, of my telescope. And right now I'm just uh, going in and making sure everything's connecting as expected. It's still early. Um, it's still daylight. It's uh, just coming up on... Um, 8 p.m. and I expect that uh, uh, probably around 9:30 it'll be dark enough to uh, uh, start doing my alignment and uh, um, getting my sessions set up. I use PhD2 guiding, and then uh, I'm using uh, K-Stars and Ecos um, for my my planetarium and then my uh, capture all my control stuff. So, well, let's see if everybody connects okay. All right. Mod looks good. So I'm running a manual filter and confirming that the filter is set. I've got the Optolong um, I'll enhance uh, dual narrow band. This is something I want to talk about in another video, Watchdog. Uh, it's really important. Um, this is uh, uh, helps um, prevent, like a well, in this case, like a crash of uh, your camera into your tripod. Um, should your control software crash, uh, if it, if Watchdog. Uh, stops receiving a uh, signal every 10 seconds is what I have it set for. Um, uh, if it doesn't receive that signal, it will go ahead and uh, perform a park mount for me, and uh, and it'll do a shutdown. Um, and that way, uh, that's better than uh, having the camera crash into the uh, tripod. I'm running a... Uh, ASI 120mm Mini for my guiding, and it's in a ZWO OAG, and uh, I've got a ZWO 
uh, ASI 533MC Pro for my capture. I don't yet have an electronic focuser. I've been reading about this. Um, maybe you might, uh, uh, in the comments, let me know. I, I think it's possible to uh, use the focuser uh, module uh, for manual focus and allow it to um, give me a plot of, uh, of focusing while I, uh, while I do it manually. If you know anything about that, I sure, I sure would appreciate some info. Anyway, that's it for now. Um, once it gets dark, I'll be back. All right, I'm back. It's about 20 after 9 my time, and there are stars in the sky. It is glorious. I can't I tell you how excited I am. So, um, yeah, after after four days, uh, um, definitely been uh, jonesing, jonesing to get uh, um, some images and get some capturing going and play around with my uh, with my gear. So, anyway, um, excited about that. Um, so, in about ten minutes or so, it's going to be dark enough for me to. Uh, um, begin getting aligned. So I thought uh, I'd kind of just uh, go through that and um, go through the setup and then uh, and then my capture process and get the uh, um, uh, get my session started. So anyway, uh, we will uh, see how this goes. Hopefully it uh, proceeds without uh, any problems. I do have an occasional uh, crash of my uh, of my of my eco software um, when I try to do my initial uh, alignment and what I found is if I am just patient to wait um, until there's enough stars in the sky um, then it will uh, it'll normally succeed without crashing if it can't plate solve sometimes um, it'll actually cause the software to crash I've been looking around for any related bugs on Mac uh, um, for that, but haven't found any information yet. But it seems if I'm just patient and wait till it's dark enough that uh, um, I can get around that problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and transition over into uh, Ecos now, and uh, then we can kind of pick it up from there. So, I think I just took a, uh, a quick capture. That's Polaris. One thing I've noticed is that uh, my alignment works much better if I go somewhere else that has more stars. So... And I think I've had good luck, um, you know, like if I go to, uh, there's plenty, there's lots of stars around NGC 7000. All right, we'll go over there. I think I'll take a quick capture there. Okay. Yeah, so there's plenty of stars there. I think that we'll give it a shot. So if you haven't seen the polar alignment in Ecos before, it's actually really nice. Um, so set up for polar alignment, it's going to uh, take three different captures uh, and plate solve them, and then it's going to provide me with uh, correction information to uh, to get aligned. So in 
in this, uh, go ahead and just click on start. Um, over here, I'm going to be uh, rotating, uh, um, I think that's degrees, 30 degrees west um, in between each capture. So it's going to take a capture where it is right now, and then it's going to rotate twice for the other two and, uh, and plate solve those to give me my solution for uh, uh, getting aligned. So let's see how this goes. This is where, if I don't have enough stars, um, it, sometimes it'll crash. So we got an image. Let's see if it solves it. It was able to solve it. Okay. The mount is rotating. All right, very good. Yeah, we didn't have any problems. So basically now it's going to give me my error. I'm actually at, um, what, 15 arc seconds in alt and 50 arc seconds in azimuth. So I can, I can improve that, I'm sure, a little bit. And um, let's go ahead and um, zoom in on this. Find the uh, correction. It gives me a little triangulation here that I can use. Sometimes it's really small, though, when my uh, um, when my error isn't too much. So there it is. So what I need to do now is select a star that we're going to make the correction on. Find one. They are a bit dim. I think I'll do this one here. So I get the little tiny crosshairs right on that star. Okay, and then my alignment is on the star. Oop. Let's see if we can get that centered here. All right, that's good enough. And let's see if I can zoom in anymore. This is where um, maybe I should uh, be binning uh, instead of at one by one. Maybe it would help if I, uh, if I did this at a, you know, like four by four or something like that. Anyway, um, I don't necessarily need to use the guides because I'm so close, so I can use the, um, they give me some little arrows here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and transition over and uh, walk out to uh, the mount and get this aligned. Okay, I'm going to start with adjusting the azimuth, and let's see if we can uh, get that dialed in. I'd like to try and get under 10. So that refresh, it will... Uh, take a new capture every two seconds and all right I'm within 14 and I'm now I'm a minute and five so and we're looking right down here did I go the wrong way no, other direction. Wow. Okay, smaller moves. All right, real small moves tonight. Okay, there's 14. I'm going to see if I can get it under 10. All right, that looks pretty good. At 7. 14. I've seen this do this before. It changes on me. I think I'll try to dial in the alt just a little bit. Okay, 0.07. Let me let that refresh. All right, we need to go down. All right, that's good. 
Let me let it refresh one more time. Double check the azimuth. Hopefully that wasn't too much. Hey, that looks good. All right, let's go with that. Seven and zero is where it ended up. All right, I'm gonna go back up and, or actually I'm going to, I'm gonna get in focus. Now, I like to go over to like, um, like Dubé, nice bright star. Let's loop on that and I'll get a bat knob mask on. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty close. Tweak it just a little bit here. I think that looks pretty good. Lock that down, make sure it's still there. All right, cool. Let's check the guide scope. Well, that's not bad. One elongated star there, I don't know what that is. Um, I think I'm gonna go with it. Let's see how guiding goes. All right, I'm gonna head back up. Need to get the lights turned off here. All right, so I'm gonna get set up. I'm gonna start over here with capture. I see 5070, which was my last one. And I think I'm gonna have enough time if everything goes good, to maybe try to go for 60 exposures at 300 uh, seconds, or five minutes. Um, let's see, cooler is already cooled down. We've got a uh, filter is set, gain running 100. With a, my camera is a offset of 10. These are lights. All right, so I've got my folder set up. This has been a little weird. Um, I'll just leave it as it is. And now we'll load that one in. And I'm going to save that capture sequence. Today is the 18th. save that. All right. And then I'm going to load a schedule from last time. We'll tweak it. Um, We'll load that capture sequence in I just created. And then I've got a FITS file that I'm using for, um, uh, for my plate solving to get back to my, um, my frame. And that FITS file Yeah, that's IC5070. Okay, good. 
Um, that will be fine. Um, kind of start this as soon as possible. And everything looks good. I have been doing uh, uh, a twilight constraint, um, but since I'm running the um, L enhance filter, I'm actually able to start a little bit earlier and run a little bit later uh, without having any problems with uh, with twilight, as long as I don't go too soon or, or, or too late. It works out good. Um, let's see. Well, I think our guide camera and everything was good. Uh, we are aligned. Um, I want to go ahead and Let's go over to check our uh, frame. So we'll go to, um, I see. That should get us close. I think I'll do a quick capture and solve on that and just see how close we are. And hopefully this doesn't crash. And we will slew. Um, five second exposure. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, it looks like my alignment and let me back up just a little bit. So when I plate solve, that should correct my, um, let me center here. When I plate solve, this should get aligned up and get the uh, nebula in my frame the way that I want it. So let's go ahead and start this thing off and see how it goes. Unpark the mount, and we're slewing over to the target. Okay, looking to plate solve now. All right, now we got some action. Oh, uh, there's that crash I was talking about earlier. All right, great. Solver succeeded. And we're heading over to guiding. All right, we're guiding. Let's see how things are running tonight. So recently, this has been settling in um, around 0 0.6, 0 0.65, which is really good. I've had some worse, but I've uh, been really happy with my guiding. Um, hopefully tonight uh, will be the same. My mount is pretty much stock. I have gone through it and I've adjusted the backlash um, on uh, both the uh, RA and deck worm gears, uh, as well as the uh, the stepper motor gears, and I got it 
pretty tight. It uh, um, has been running really, really well for me. I keep thinking I want to do the um, the belt mod on it, but it's been performing really well. So I don't know. We'll see. It's probably something I'll end up doing at some point. Um, the mount is not loud when it slews. Um, I may do some cleanup of the uh, of the grease. Um, it's kind of sticky, um, and get a, uh, some better grease in that mount. All right. Well, that seems like everything's going okay. We'll get a capture in here and double check everything. And if that all looks good, I think we can let this thing run. I guess I can take a look at the frame. Make sure we got what I expected here. Oops. Let's back that up a little bit. Oh my goodness. All right, there we go. That's one thing. The mouse, I'm using a trackpad, and it is so sensitive. All right. Hard to see, but there's some nebulosity there. I think we're doing okay. All right, I'm going to let this run, and I will see you early in the morning. Although it looks like this guiding going AWOL here. Oh, that was dither. Yeah, I do run, uh, um, run a dither in between frames. All right. So I'll see you in the morning. All right. Hey, gang, good morning. It's the next day, and it's, um, I don't know, I, I started about 5.30. It's, a, it's coming up on 6 now. Um, we got a full night of data. Um, I haven't looked at anything yet, but it, it's, uh, uh, it looks really promising um, that everything went well. And uh, I just got a couple things to do. Um, here to uh, wrap things up for this session, and I want to get um, uh, I want to get some some flats and some uh, some bias. Um, I have my uh, uh, ADU here set uh, for flat uh, my flat duration. It's going to automatically calculate um, my exposure time for me based on this, which. I, uh, I think that's a, a half of my ADU. Um, anyway, I, I usually just set this to one so it's not hunting too long. And I'm just waiting for my camera to cool, which it's not right now. So as soon as that uh, uh, gets the temperature, um, then I'll get these uh, flats and I'm going to do some biases as well. Um, to uh, to wrap things up, so I'll be back when the camera's ready. I want to go ahead and get rid of that. Make sure this all looks right. Which it is, and I'm going to do um, 50 of those. on it and I'm using the white t-shirt method as shown here and I'll be back once this is done all right the flats finished so I want to get my uh, biases real quick and just as far for the flats, they turned out 
really good. I, I think it's questionable if I need to take these or not. So I've got the uh, uh, the lens cover on, and I've got it lightly covered with um, my tarp. And uh, um, then I just set this up at the uh, lowest exposure that I have. So I'll take 50 biases. And this won't take long. I'll be back when it's done. Okay, that wrapped up pretty quick. And I'll take a quick look. All right. So with that, let's see, we can go and, and take a look at what I got last night. So we're in day two. And uh, so there's my biases and flats that we just took. Lights from last night. And we got a total of 60, so the entire session completed successfully. And uh, I haven't looked at any of these yet. Then my next step is to go ahead and um, and uh, get a zip file together here, uh, which I can do that right now. And then once the zip file is created, I um, I connect. Uh, to my Raspberry Pi uh, via SMB and then do a, a, a file transfer over onto my main machine here that I'm And change that to day two folder and we'll zip the day two and get that started. So this will take a bit and um, like I said when this is done I just uh, uh, I just transfer it over um, and then I can begin working with it from there. So once I uh, get this done I uh, will show you the um, uh, the raw images. Um, we'll take a look how we're doing because I, I didn't need to go through and blink through them and have a look. So anyway, when we get there, I will come back. All right, file transfer has completed uh, of the zip file that I created. So I can go ahead and get everything shut down at this point. All right, everything's shut down. I'll just have to go unplug it. Um, but uh, hey, now, We've actually got our data over here. So I'll do a quick organization on this. Unzip this. All right. We got our data. So I'm going to go through a process now and get this set up so I can um, link through these. Go ahead and rename these files while I'm here. And actually what I do is I've got a dark library here. And here's my... All of my darks, I'll put those into a new folder. And paste those in. All right, so I've got my entire session together. So let me get these set up for blinking, and then I'll be right back. All right, I'm over in Serial now, and I've got my blink sequence created. Um, so I can go through and have a look at uh, all these subframes. Um, and then uh, I can deselect any that, uh, um, that I want to reject. Also looking to see if I notice anything moving in these images. You know, be good to discover like a a new uh, 
meteor or comet or something, you know? All right, what we're seeing here, and I run into this, and I haven't figured it out yet, but with uh, PhD2, when um, this, this occurred in my um, meridian flip, and everything goes fine in the, in the flip, and uh, my scheduler uh, kind of pauses everything, um, and then once the, 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 it goes back over to the guiding stage and uh, when PhD2 gets it, um, as soon as it's done calibrating, um, well, not really done, but when it gets to a point in calibration, it's, it's saying that it's, uh, or uh, Eco thinks it's already guiding again, but it's not yet. Uh, so this is what we're seeing is, is calibration steps from PhD2. So... Um, and I, I, I see this in each one of my sessions where I have a meridian flip, and I'm not sure how to configure that to wait a little bit longer, PhD2, to actually um, say that it's, uh, you know, not to say that it's guiding um, before it actually is. So I'll reject that one. These look really good. All right, so I actually I have 59 out of 60. I'm really happy. <laughs> That's awesome. So um, yeah, with that frames list, uh, um, I think I can go ahead and export these QA. I call it QA. This is my my QA step for quality assurance and. Let's go ahead and export that. Okay, it's working this time. Export succeeded. So that should be in my lights. No? Oh, there's my QA. Yeah, I missed a step on this, but that's cool. I can just uh, copy these. Put those over here. And there's my 59 lights. I can get rid of that. All right. So that pretty much wraps up this session. The next steps for me are to uh, start processing on this. But I, I, I got another night that I want to get. So anyway, with that, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, uh, if, you, if you liked it, please like and subscribe. And anyway, looking forward to uh, um, hearing what you might have to say about improving any of the process that you saw here. I know it, it's, it's, some things feel a little bit clunky. I'd like to improve um, my workflow. I'm always trying to improve my workflow. So, you know, if you have uh, suggestions or comments about anything that I've done here, yeah, please uh, let me know in the comments. And uh, anyway, look forward to talking to you. Thanks so much.